Hello, and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show podcast with astrologer Shelley Overton. Hi, and welcome to the April 15th, 2022 edition of the Astro Energy Astrology podcast. My name is Shelley Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and we're going to talk today on a couple different subjects. We're going to be talking about what's going on in the sky, um, transits of Mars into Pisces, and um, other aspects that just happened in the last 24 hours, what's happening in the next 24 hours and the next week. And we're going to talk about um, some other things that probably a little more emotional and Uh, Anyway, we'll get into it here, and you'll know by the title what all is in this podcast. So today we are dealing with a brand new moon in Libra, which by now actually isn't so brand new. It's at 10 degrees of Libra. Just went in last night, yesterday afternoon, actually, Eastern time at 446. And then Mars went into Pisces, and when they went into their respective signs, they immediately in conjunction to it in conjuncted to each other. We've got Mercury and Venus in a sextile, both in conjunct to the moon right now, which creates a finger of God aspect. This is a very fast moving finger of God, but an interesting combination of planets because Venus is our desire nature. It is money and monetary systems and love. And then Mercury at nine degrees of Taurus is about thought and communication, but answers to Venus because it's in the sign of Taurus. Uh, We've also got Uranus at 13 degrees of Taurus, which brings it within three degrees of a sextile to Venus. And then they both are aspecting the moon at an inconjunct, which is 150 degrees. And that can be a stress aspect. So all of these three planets together, or four if you include Uranus, Venus, Mercury, Uranus, and the moon, combine to tell us a story of where we find our security, where we feel safe. And with the moon in Libra, it's about balance. Libra also answers to Venus. So even though the moon is at the apex of this finger of God aspect, um, we've got Venus very strongly influencing both because Libra and Taurus are both ruled ruled by Venus. So it does aspect um, how we manifest things uh, around the house, what we see as um, a strong sense of balance in our homes. And also with Venus in Pisces, she is very dreamy. She is um, in her desire nature and in her creative nature. And then Mercury and Taurus wants things to be very grounded and Uranus and air sign can move through things very rapidly and we cycle through things that we desire or like, and then we're done with them and on to the next thing. It can make us have a difficult time with stability. We are, it's very ADD energy and it means that we're not necessarily grounded, but in Taurus, Uranus can be very grounded and really want to dig in and do something with the thought energy and the um, information that comes in very rapidly with Uranus and Taurus. Within the next 24 hours, the moon will be trying to Saturn in Aquarius. And that will mean a rather strong, I would say, event around um, money and around balance and partnership information. This is also technology systems. And as I speak, Elon Musk has presented a $43 billion um, offer for Twitter. So that is the news story as I'm telling you about this. So it should be really interesting to see what happens with that. I don't necessarily believe he will get it. I think that came in last night. And because Mars changed signs into Pisces, he presented it after Mars was joining with Saturn, but also as Mars was basically void, of course, for that planet. And yes, void, of course, is a moon term, but definitely as a planet such as Mars, an action-based planet is about ready to change signs. If we initiate something just as it's about to change signs, it shifts the energy of that offer. And so I don't necessarily see him being successful with that. 
Um, I think Twitter is definitely pushing back on the whole idea. So we'll see how that goes. But having Mars at end degrees of Aquarius when you present an offer is kind of like, where is it going to go? It's not going to go anywhere because there is nowhere else for it to go. So we'll watch that. But uh, yeah, that's the energy that comes with Mars into Pisces. I'm not going to talk about all of the planets in Pisces just yet. I'll tell you about the other things I see and what's coming for the week. And then we'll talk about Pisces because we have four planets now in Pisces. So it's a very, very strong energy today. Okay, so coming up this week, we've got uh, today is Friday the 15th, like I said, tax day historically, but because Easter falls this weekend, and of course that's gonna be difficult to do your taxes when uh, you're focusing on family events, we've got till the 18th is what I read on the IRS website. You can double check that. I would double check it. Do not take my word for it, but um, I think there's a slight extension on that unless you've actually put in paperwork for an extension. Um, Monday, Mercury joins up with Uranus. So the energy of clarity and ideas that we want to create and make into tangible goods, such as inventions, is really actually very active. We've got early degrees of Mercury. The sun will go in there in about five days from now, so late next week. Early next week, the sun goes into Taurus, and so we're going to shift our energy from just much more aggression. And actually early on when it first gets into Taurus is when we can see a stronger push towards aggressive, abusive energy. And then it settles into the Venusian Taurus territory of the sky. And then that will definitely make more uh, material goods appear, you know, as we get more into our materialistic side. If we're looking at this Mars just getting out of Aquarius, Saturn, structure of Saturn in Aquarius late degrees, as the planets transit into that Pisces, which is very creative, we see um, Mercury and the sun in early Taurus, which says now we can take this creative energy and really make it into tangible goods, something more solid. Um, we've got the Saturn energy also that um, technological influence of Aquarius, humanitarian influence, the masses. We see unions coming about in the last week. We had voting in unions, which is very much a Saturn and Aquarius energy. Um, we've got more like Starbucks and Am I know Amazon. I think that's the company they voted this past week. Um, Starbucks and a few others are now starting to push back and think maybe they can get unions into their workplaces. Not surprising, you know, as Saturn goes through the last seven degrees and it'll retrograde to the middle degrees. So we've got at least another year of Saturn in Aquarius. It will um, put forth an effort, pull back, review, and then put forth more effort towards, towards the union storyline. Um, we've got today in Taurus is Mercury, Uranus, and the North Node soon to be joined on Tuesday by the sun. So that means Taurus, love, money, material goods, retail are going to be expanding, especially with Mercury joining Uranus next week. It's going to just really expand technology, um, online digital currency, and including retail. Um, anything you can do online is going to be really dropped into a good pond and grow uh, from next week after Tuesday. So on Tuesday the 19th, it is uh, 10, 24 p.m. that the sun goes into Taurus. Okay, so tomorrow we have a full moon in Libra and that is gonna be late degrees Libra. If you're not real familiar, um, the full moon energy is an exact opposition to the sun. And that's 26 degrees and 46 minutes. It happens at 2.55 2 p.m. And then the first aspect following that at 5.57 p.m., this is all Eastern, um, we have moon square to Pluto in Capricorn, followed by, by a void of course moon for about three hours. And then the moon moves into Scorpio Saturday 
And so um, this is the day, I'm sorry. If I said tomorrow, I meant Saturday. And if it's Friday, it will be tomorrow for you. But today when I'm recording this, it's the day after tomorrow. So um, Saturday is the full moon in the middle of the afternoon. Um, oh yes, the moon, is, the moon is below the horizon, sun in the sky. So that means the other side of the earth has the full moon um, at nighttime. And we have it below the horizon here in uh, America. So we're going to not see the actual full moon until it rises in the evening after seven. And it will be quite beautiful. I've noticed uh, last night was very beautiful moon. What I did today was write down a list of attributes that Pisces brings to us when planets trigger that energy in the sky. So this is going to be a checklist. I'm going to put it up. You can check the description below. If you're looking at the video, it'll be down there, um, a link to where you can get it. I'm going to post it, but I haven't decided just yet as I'm recording this, where I'm going to post it. It could be Facebook uh, group, which would be the Astro Energy Show page, but more likely it's going to be Patreon or um, on my forum on my website, which is angeliczodiac.com. And so you can find it there. Okay, so when we get planets moving into Pisces, we turn within, we start to really uh, get quiet and silent and turn within. We, we see enhanced intuition and emotional awareness. We need to have more alone time because we can feel overwhelmed by the excessive amount of energy we feel. We can feel cuddly and want to cocoon with our family and familiar people and animals. We know each other's emotions as if they were our own. Things become more synchronistic, which means we can be at the right place at the right time. We may think about someone from the past and boom, we run into them. Um, we believe in the good in people. We have an expansion of agape love, which is you see the higher self and the higher spirit in others. We are more tired and um, Pisces rules dreams. So hence we are being pulled to the dream world continuously and have an expanded ability for daydreaming. Work slows down and can become difficult to fulfill as we feel like we're moving through jello. We lose interest in work because it's the opposite sign of Virgo. And so Virgo energy rules work. We are more interested in movies and stories. We seek escapism. We seek to run away from our normal reality. Drugs can be more prevalent at this time. Addictions can rear their ugly head, including more escapism through alcohol. There are more well-known people dying, celebrities and actors, and people who ha we have a sentimental connection to from the past. Sentimentality arrives and appears more so that we may think back on yesteryear and past days and emotional connections we had to things. We seek reassurance in the past. We can go through old photos and old, old photo albums. Uh, people from the past pop back up into our lives. We may attend more funerals at this time. Retirement becomes an option. Pisces rules retirement and end of cycles. Feelings can be overwhelming as we can't distinguish ours from another's. Uh, we may have more suicidal thoughts and I encourage you to um, touch base with people you think may not be handling this energy very well. Mars in Pisces is suicidal action. So definitely it becomes much more urgent if you feel that someone isn't handling their emotions or their situation well. Um, definitely increased alcohol or drug usage can show that they are wanting to escape, which can be translated with Mars and Pisces into suicide. Mars in Pisces means that aggressive actions taken at this time can be a cry for help in with the people who are processing their emotions. If they're not able to truly process uh, very well, they may act out with aggressive behaviors. We're more artistic and we channel art and music and uh, more creative endeavors at this time. Photography, filmmaking is ruled by Pisces. Emotional eating can increase. We see more floods as Pisces rules water 
and the oceans and basically liquids. So we can also retain water within our bodies. We are processing grief at this time. Interest in photography or filmmaking is more pronounced. We have a need to be with others more right now. And mental health becomes more about emotional health. Interest in metaphysical pursuits, crystals, readings, the afterlife, and the occult can appear at this time. Um, metaphysical phenomena can occur more at this time. Seeing orbs, seeing flashes of light. I've been seeing um, light moving right here on the side of my eye more recently. Um, things that we think we see out of the corner of our eye and we turn and they're not there. Um, telepathy increases at this time. The ability to sense lies and feel like we know when people are not telling us the truth, but by the opposite token, we also can be more gullible to believe people. So be more cautious. Pisces squares travelers and educators and real estate. And that's because Gemini and Sagittarius rule the squaring sign to Pisces. And so, and also the opposite sign Virgo rules educators. So we may have trouble with those and people um, see through inauthentic sales of properties. Um, people may follow through with sales on properties and the seller is not being forthright and telling you everything that's wrong with the property. Um, flooded houses, um, water increases, water um, in like pipes burst, toilets don't flush, sinks can get backed up, toilets can get backed up. We could lose our electronics in the water. Um, just be careful with that. And our, our dreams can become more vivid and prophetic at this time. I've been having really prophetic um, or realistic dreams, actually. And when I'm in my dreams, I'm like, wow, this is so real. Like I'm in an alternate reality. Allergies and illness increases. And keep this in mind with COVID. Jupiter just joined up with Neptune last week is still in Pisces. N degrees, Jupiter N degrees of Pisces is going to mean that there's a potential for people passing. Um, definitely it is the end of a cycle and Jupiter can mean transformation and transition. So know that that is likely in the next few weeks. Um, feet are accented. Pisces rules the feet. So foot pain and foot issues can arise, including shoes needing to be rebought or wearing out. We are in a cycle of codependence with Pisces. We are having a difficult time, like I said earlier, determining what's us and what's our emotion and what's another. So it, that lends itself to codependence. Um, it's a great time for meditation. We are more susceptible to trance and hypnosis. Um, pandemics come in under Neptune energy and Pisces energy. We can be more distractible at this time. Vintage clothing and goods are highlighted and we are really into our reminiscence era. So things that are vintage, things that are archival, um, going back into genealogy can also be another um, energy that we really research and find out about at this time. So this is a pretty long list. I think it's probably close to 50 items. And I will post this on uh, one or the other or both of my sites, probably Facebook and um, also my website and Patreon. Not guaranteeing Facebook, but definitely it's accessible. You just have to follow the links below. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about something else that kind of came up yesterday for me. I was listening to some music online and I stumbled on this lady. She was actually an amazing um, like folk artist. And anyway, her name is Rhiannon Giddens, G-I-D-D-E-N-S. And she did a song called Birmingham Sunday. And it was an amazing song when I listened to it. I, it was a really beautiful song. And it references the bombing in Birmingham in 1963. It was September 15th, 1963. And because I was born in 1964, I'm rather fascinated by what went on in that timeline because Uranus and Pluto were joining conjunction. They came into exact conjunction in 1965, but 
because 1963 was when we had so much civil unrest with civil rights and um, African-American Black Lives Matter really, um, they didn't have that name for it then. And I'm not really sure what to call it, just civil rights movement, I guess. Um, that was happening starting in May and even earlier, probably in April of 63. I know um, I looked back on the timeline for the Birmingham bombing. And I will tell you a little bit about that. Um, the KKK, mem four members of the KKK planted dynamite underneath the stairs to the church in Birmingham, Alabama. And it was a predominantly black church. And they claimed that they were just trying to scare people. But in the trial, one of the trials, which honestly, the trials of the people involved stretched out into the 90s because they didn't, the, some of the uh, footage and evidence was lost for many years. There was testimony, I believe, that was lost. And um, it resurfaced later on. And I know in the 1970s, there was a trial for one of them. Uh, the main, one of the main guys who was in it, who um, got caught right away, was convicted in the 60s. I believe it didn't happen until 67. And then in the 70s, another one was tried. And then I believe again in the 90s, what happened was the, the bombs were lit, the dynamite was lit. And it was when little girls were there getting ready for Sunday school and they were the closest to the stairs. And when it went off, four of them died. And there was one other girl who was close by. She didn't die. She actually lived and was still alive. I believe as far as I researched, she was still alive um, recently. Her name was Sarah Collins. And at the time, 15 sticks of dynamite were put under the stairs. And they had a phone call to the secretary, who was at that time a 14-year-old girl, and they said three minutes. And then after that, within a minute, the bombs or the dynamite blew, left a seven-foot hole in the church, and four girls died in the bomb. And it was three that were 14, one was 11, and they were all black. And that shook the nation. It woke them up out of their acceptance of the strife that was going on in the state of Alabama throughout the year and up until that time. And so um, I just find this to be very disturbing and interesting event. And one that I knew about, but I didn't really research. And it was basically due to this song that I heard. And it was such a beautiful song. I will play it at the end of this podcast. So the song Birmingham Sunday was used in the movie Four Little Girls, which is a Spike Lee movie based on this event and a documentary uh, film. So check that out. If you want to find out more, I'm going to be watching it. And it said it's pretty intense. So I don't know if I can because I'm very empathic. But at the time, I'm going to do this chart and then I'm going to talk about Birmingham, uh, the city, because I have the uh, date of incorporation for Birmingham. But at the time, there was a 22 degree Scorpio rising. Neptune and Mars were in Scorpio in the 12th house. Mars had just gone in not long before that at two degrees of Scorpio. A very large quantity of planets were in Virgo, which can also rule the military. And my guess is the people who set off this bomb were militaristic in their thinking and probably in the military or supported military action because again, that is the same kind of energy that Virgo brings um, one of the facets of Virgo. Uh, Uranus at six degrees and Pluto at 12. So they were six degrees apart. The sun was at 22 of Virgo at that time. Mercury was at one degree of Libra, but Venus was at 26 late degrees. Uh, Venus ruling the girls and they were at um, the 26 degree mark of Virgo. And then Mercury had just gone into Libra, which op is opposite to Aries. Aries energy was Jupiter at 17 Aries at that day. And so the day was September 15th, 1963, 1022 AM. 
And again, we're finding this 22 degree, I don't know if you remember uh, when, the co when COVID came in, right before we found out about it and it was starting to spread in the country, we just didn't have it in the common awareness yet. But in 2020, we had a conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto in Virgo, not Virgo, in Capricorn at 22 degrees. And so 22 is a significant degree. We also have 1022 AM for the bomb going off, 22 degrees for the sun, and a 22 degree rising in Scorpio at that time. So it is a repetitive number. And uh, I'm not going to do the numerology of it, although I may touch on it a little bit at some point, um, 22 equals four, but definitely numerologically, there are significant indicators um, from that number, kind of like remember 911, 1111, you know, these are numbers that are um, considered angel numbers, but I would say in this instance, definitely there were Support, there was support of the angelic realm because, you know, when four, you know, young innocent girls pass, of course, you're going to have support from the other side. Um, so Uranus Pluto conjunct is an extreme cooperation of explosive energy. Pluto is the planet and sign of deep passions. Uh, Uranus is chemicals and chemical warfare and explosions, especially coupled with Pluto. Pluto, we think of as volcanoes and fire eruptions. Um, you know, volcanoes have liquid magma. So that is the liquid side of Pluto's watery nature. It is the ruler of water sign Scorpio. So at the time of the bomb explosion, the rising sign was Pluto ruled Scorpio at 22, and then you go up to where Pluto is up in the sky in Virgo, and the sun was at 22, 10 degrees past Pluto, with that Uranus energy only four degrees away, influencing it. Mercury moving out of Virgo into Libra, while Libra is balance and cooperation and tends to be more of a pacifist energy, Mercury moving away from Virgo into another sign can trigger the energy of whatever was going on with that Virgo sign. And of course, Uranus, Pluto, Sun, Venus are going to combine for a, an energy in the Virgo Aryan sky, which can also be accidents. Or um, in this case, it also brings in aggression. At the time, Mars in 12th house in Scorpio is the expression of that aggression. So naturally, Virgo. Um, being a Virgo, I'm an extreme pacifist, bless you. <laughs> um, I have Uranus, Pluto, Sun, Mercury in my house of Aquarius, in the um, 11th house of the Zodiac, which is the pacifist humanitarian area. At the time, all the Virgo was in the Capricorn sector of the Zodiac. So you have not only the energy going through that Capricorn um, tangible area, but you have Virgo in Earth, which is, you know, both Capricorn is Earth and Virgo is Earth. So that's the physical um, expression of it. And then as Mercury moves out of that area, it releases some of that. So that was also a contributing factor to the explosion. And then having Saturn in the third house in Aquarius is wanting to express the energy of awareness and understanding. And so um, Saturn is that restriction. That's the old guard. But in Aquarius, they I would say Saturn, which is what we have now, Saturn in Aquarius um, is the old guard thinking that they are protecting something for the good of the others. And so that can come out as well. And that's what we've been seeing as well um, a year ago with the insurrection or with um, even the unionization going on right now um, is express, expressing that humanitarian or not even humanitarian, but just the collectivism that's going on with um, Saturn and Aquarius. Because Saturn was in Aquarius and all the planets were in Virgo, that's where the civil rights movement and that whole man, mindset and growth, that was the exponential growth and awareness of 
people and other cultures coming in at that time. And here we are in two Saturn returns since then. So um, now we've got Saturn in the sky currently at 23 Aquarius, just past that same degree of the bombing. Um, We've got Chiron in the chart of the bombing at 12 degrees of Pisces. And currently we have Venus at, oh, where's Venus? 10 degrees of Pisces coming up on that same Chiron of that wounding. So that should be interesting. I'm wondering if something will come up from that bombing or maybe another situation that involves multiple girls or some situation along that line. Uh, we've got today in the sky, Jupiter, and Neptune conjunct in the house of home and family in Pisces. And now Mars moved into Pisces as well. So that also goes into home and family and making us more aware, more sensitive. I mean, I just saw this yesterday. So that energy was in the collective consciousness. So it wouldn't surprise me if um, Birmingham or Alabama or civil rights again has another peak month with this Piscean energy. And then also the Aries energy, Venus will be moving into Aries here within a few weeks, probably not too long, actually. Let's just look that up. Venus goes into um, Aries on the 3rd of May. So two weeks, a little over two weeks from now. And um, so that's going to be a more aggressive behavior and action regarding uh, women and how they interact with society and what's expected of them. Okay, so the moon was at Midheaven when this event happened. And of course, moon rules security, safety, and um, the mother. And so mothers were deeply affected by what happened. The moon had gone past an exact opposition to Saturn earlier in the day or overnight from when this happened. Moon was in Leo at 26 degrees. So of course, Leo rules children. Midheaven is the attention is going to the children. And so um, Venus and uh, Mercury were really close together in this chart, meaning that the wounding was affecting the female energy. Mars was hidden. Mars, if you think about the KKK, they wear masks, they are hidden. In Scorpio, that is also the energy of the mafia or the underworld and what is hidden in the 12th house. So things were going on that were hidden. But of course, as time went on, it rotated, the, the chart rotated and brought the Mars out into the public eye. So um, anyway, that's the chart for Birmingham. Um, I'm very deeply affected. Um, we're, we're really weepy at this point. So if you're attracted to things that are more sentimental and bring about tears, it is very much in alignment with what's going on here. I mean, I feel like my eyes look tired. I feel tired giving this and the sky is getting overcast as we talk about this. So the light's dimming and I'm feeling very much taken by a wave of not exhaustion, but definitely sleepiness. Okay, and then I'm going to look at the chart. And that, by the way, that was the 16th Street Baptist Church. Um, I think I said 6th Avenue Baptist Church. I will probably edit that out. 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. And Birmingham was incorporated with a 26 degree, well, I put it for 7 a.m., which is a sunrise chart, because I don't know the time they were incorporated. So I always default to a sunrise chart which is roughly 7 a.m. and 27 degrees rising sign in Sagittarius. And that can be a drive towards information around um, musicians and uh, the, it is people of other cultures. So having an identity that associates to people of other cultures is inborn within their incorporation. And then Venus is at 10 degrees of Scorpio in their chart. Venus ruling girls was at 10 degrees. So what did I say in Birmingham? Mars was at two degrees. So they were eight degrees apart, the first degree of orb, meaning when they're that far apart. So the day of the bombing, Mars was within eight degrees or a conjunction to Venus in Scorpio, which is um, passion and aggression and warriors. We've got uh, Birmingham with a zero degree Leo Uranus. Uh, Jupiter was at 28 degree of Cancer, 
And so that was wrapping up the transformation or transition around mothers. So of course, mothers dealing with the loss of their daughters was inborn because Jupiter was two degrees away from Uranus in the incorporation. So that very much shows the storyline of mothers being affected. It was in the seventh house. So, so Jupiter at the end degrees of Cancer shows mothers and transformation transition with Uranus three degrees away from that Jupiter. That's the unexpected. It is the last degree of the house of partnership right on the cusp of, um, I would say, two degrees of Leo. And so at two degrees of Leo, that's where Uranus feels that intensity as it transitions into Leo. Um, so early degrees Leo have a significant influence on Birmingham. There's an opposition at two degrees for the Mars, the two degrees of Aquarius in the chart of Birmingham. So with um, two degree Mars in Scorpio squares, the two degree Mars of Birmingham, uh, we have a five degree moon at early Aries and a six degree Chiron in Aries, which rules men. And then, and also um, this is civil rights. So it's black culture being affected in early degrees of Aries, which is also what we felt when we saw um, George Floyd and all of that coming in, it was the Aries energy. So I'm just letting you know, once again, Aries energy very strongly associates to black culture and black lives matter. Um, Neptune at 21 Aries in the Birmingham chart. So what I see as a collective view of this chart, and then the nodes of fate are at 21 degrees Gemini and Sagittarius. And uh, let's see if they were triggered at the bombing. Um, in conjunct to the nodes of fate at the time, and Venus was square to the nodes of fate at that time as well. So we see um, the moon one degree off of Chiron in the House of Communications in the sign of Aries for the Birmingham chart. So that means that there is an emotional energy, um, a even emotional uh, moodiness associated with Birmingham and Chiron. So the wounding around mothers and then Jupiter Uranus up there in the last degrees of the seventh house with Cancer strong for Jupiter moving in to Leo, which is children in the house of death and rebirth. And then um, we have Saturn, Mercury within seven degrees of orb in the first house in Capricorn. And so we've got the sun on the horizon about to go into Capricorn for Birmingham. And at the time of incorporation, Saturn, Mercury conjunct. And of course, Mercury already went past Saturn in this chart. So I would say in the first house, Capricorn, that is a long-term wounding or a long-term event. And then it also is very much associated with the identity of the city. This is also where Martin Luther King Jr. was very strong in his influence. Um, the stronger ministers in the churches were coming up and having a say at that time. And that's partly how Martin Luther King Jr. got in the, the public eye is because he was one of multiple ministers that were starting to really um, speak out about the treatment of blacks in the community and in culture. So anyway, um, that's pretty much all for what I see and what I'm gonna cover there. But having Mars in the second house, the material world uh, in Aquarius is going to also influence how the mentality expresses in that city. I would say a positive note that Mars and Aquarius is going to make them much more driven towards humanitarianism, which of course the events of Birmingham, and it wasn't just one bombing, I think there are multiple bombings in Birmingham um, and multiple events from the civil rights movement that it just makes them much more aware of humanitarianism and rights associated with the people of the city and associated with the culture of the city. So um, currently, of course, we have Pluto very close to the zero degree of Aquarius next year, it's going to move in and be right on that Mars. So I think that Birmingham definitely has a strong um, push in the civil rights movement from this event, but also 
from what's going to transpire next year as well. So I'm just looking to that. I've got chills with that, that they are um, a very strong forward momentum towards civil rights. And, you know, because of the events, they have that much more deep commitment to making something happen. And wherever Pluto is, especially if it's on the cusp coming in here to Aquarius, is going to have a significant impact in the chart of what, whoever has it at that cusp degree. And I've got three people I know with the Aquarian energy at zero degrees on the cusp of different parts of their chart. And it means that there are different influences. Um, one is at the horizon, which means a change of identity and how we think of ourselves in the collective. The midheaven is a change of fame, a change of career. And another one has it at the IC, the bottom, the home and family sector, which is a change of how we see ourselves in the family of man. And here with Pluto on the cusp of the material world, it means that we are going to really challenge our place in the collective community and our materiality, the material goods. So it's it's everything that is material and of value and a value in a person sense and a value in a love committed to a partner sense, um, getting in a couple and all that. I've talked about it before. Okay, so that's a lot to digest and a lot to edit. I am going to leave it there. I hope you have a good week um, with the full moon in Libra. I didn't really say much about that. So let's just touch on that real quick before we end the podcast. I'm sorry, um, I didn't say a bit more. So yeah, I think we're gonna probably just split the week. Um, the full moon at 26 Libra means that there is a trigger. And I wanna say, because the Ukraine uh, Russia war is also a Libra slash Aquarian energy, and the people involved in it have a very strong Libra connection. Late degree full moon in Libra means an end story around diplomacy. I read that they are kicking about 40 diplomats out of England and other countries, right? And diplomats, and that's in quotes because they are also basically um, spies and doing espionage, which is why they are kicking them out. So it definitely affects, is affected by that. Um, Libra diplomacy, but also spying. And um, Aries is the opposite sign. So it is a connection to war on some level or aggression. And then we have Mercury conjunct Uranus on Monday. I said, that's a very high thinking, quick-minded energy. Uh, don't be surprised if you can't keep a thought in your head on Monday. Venus joins up uh, in sextile to Uranus on Monday as well. There's a square with Pluto from the sun to Pluto. So it's going to be pretty rocking and rolling Monday. Um, Tuesday, the sun enters Taurus. So it goes from moon in Sagittarius squaring Aries, which is fiery and can be conflicting along the lines of refugees, which I know England sending refugees to Rwanda to be processed, which is like, why are you doing that? Um, you know, those are Ukrainian ref refugees going to Rwanda. Like, why are you shipping them out? But um, so I know that strife in England, and then it includes the foreign connection. And refugees are very Uranian. So Venus, Neptune, energy connected to Pisces next week, sextile to Uranus. So there's going to be some kind of tangible reasoning or something that comes about where um, we look to a higher energy, a higher understanding of what's going on. And then a conflict between wanting to just take care of something and having to do things by the book between the Aries sun and Pluto in uh, Capricorn. Then, yeah, like I said, Tuesday, um, moon in Sag, squaring Mars in Pisces. So it's going to be a conflict of foreign energy. We're going to have an inconjunct of moon in Sag to Uranus and Taurus. So that's going to also probably rise the story or raise, you know, bring up the story about the conflict around refugees and how they are or are not getting um, goods that they need to survive. With Uranus and Taurus, it's about food and, and getting food. Sun goes into Taurus, which is going to accent that energy. Um, moon squares Venus, uh, Sag moon squaring Venus in Pisces. So Tuesday is really strong about foreign energy and the culture of other people cooperating. 
Then Wednesday is also Moon and Sag, uh, square in conjunct. Then there's a sextile to Saturn in the midday Eastern. So we're going to have um, more awareness of how to go about the process of things and a transformation transition midday with a square to Jupiter and Pisces. Thursday looks actually fairly cooperative and Friday of next week, the 22nd, 22nd. So it is Earth Day and it's Orthodox Good Friday. The moon is in Capricorn, which directly associates to the Christian religion and churches in general, sextile to Venus and Pisces. So that is going to be a strong connection to the end of Passover. Orthodox Easter is on Sunday. I have noise in the background, so I'm going to end it. And please do have a good Easter. And um, I celebrate spring because I'm a Buddhist. And so it's about bunnies, eggs, and brunches. Anyway, you have a good Easter if you celebrate it. And take care until next week. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Shelly. I wanted to give you a heads up that there are a lot of new art prints at ShellyOverton.com. So go over there and check them out. S-H-E-L-L-E-Y-O-V-E-R-T-O-N.com. Thanks. Hi, this is Shelly. Thank you for joining us this week. To contact me for a private reading, go to AngelicZodiac.com under the Readings tab. Background music was provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. To purchase my ebook, Learn Astrology, you can find it at AngelicZodiac.com, including discounts. Be sure to check back next week and subscribe through iTunes at Astro Energy Astrology Show.